Welcome back to The Rustic Wife on Milana. So as you can see, I'm standing in front of my garden here. And as you can also see, it's covered in snow. So we are nowhere ready to start planting. But I thought I would do a video today on some things that you can do to get a head start on your garden plans. Now I did uh, a poll on my community tab the other day and the majority of you that voted wanted to see a video on planning your garden for spring or planning what you're going to plant <laughs> in your garden for spring. That's what this video is going to be about. So thank you to everybody that voted and that's what the video is today. So I'm just going to head inside. I'm going to show you some of the things that I have pre-ordered and received and also some of the equipment that I will be checking over and going through and maybe ordering some things if I need it. I'm back in the house and I thought I would go over a few of the things that I have ordered early just to be prepared. Last year we were kind of left short, especially when it came to pest control. So what I want to do is just go over everything that we have ordered and some of the things that I can think of that you may need to check out. Um, starting with, first of all, you should also know exactly what you want to plant in your garden. That is first, <laughs> because if you don't know what you want to plant, then you won't know what seeds to order or purchase from the store. I just posted a few weeks ago a video on tips on selecting the garden seeds and also how to read a seed catalog if you're going to order them. So um, I have pre-ordered my seeds. I was a little worried about shortages, so I ordered them early and I received almost all of my seeds. I ordered from four companies this year and I have all of my seeds except for one and that one it did say it was going to be a little bit later probably this month which is fine I've got them ordered so I'll be expecting those so I will leave a link to that seed video that I did I'll leave it above and also in the description box so first off like I said you want to know what you want to grow and then you want to get your seeds ordered or purchase from the store because depending on your growing zone we are in Ontario here so we are grow growing zone 5b our season is not long enough to direct seed certain things like tomatoes or leeks or peppers or onions. So we need to start those early. So that is another reason why you want to get your seeds early is if you need to start them indoors. Now tomatoes, we're not going to start ours until April, but something like a leek or an onion, we need to start earlier than that. The seed packages will have all the information you need about direct seeding or starting them indoors. So this, this one in particular, it says you need to start indoors eight to 10 weeks prior to the last frost. So that's why you need to know your growing zone. You need to know when your last frost is so that you can count back and know when you need to start your seeds. So that is the seeds. You need to get those ordered just in case of shortages or just so you have them on hand and you can play in your garden or you can start your seeds indoors or the ones that are necessary to start indoors early. So now that I've mentioned um, you figuring out what you want to grow in your garden and ordering your seeds or purchasing them from a store, it's a good idea to do a little diagram and map out where you want everything to put to be put in your garden and, and spacing so that you kind of have an idea and you know how much to order for starters and where you want everything. If you are a first time gardener and you have a fresh plot with nothing's grown in there before, it's a good idea to investigate um, companion planting. So you wanna know which plants do well together and which ones you should avoid planting together. You can also do some research on which herbs and flowers are beneficial to keep down pests in your garden too. So that's a good idea. But if you have had a garden previously, it's also a great idea to rotate your crops. It not only helps to eliminate building up pests and diseases in the soil, but it also helps retain the nutrients of the soil too. So you can look at where you planted your thing, your, your seedlings and your seeds last year and maybe do a whole new other rotation. So you don't want to plant potatoes where you had your tomatoes last year because they are from the same family. They are a nightshade family. So you want to put them in completely different areas. Um, for us, we had an issue with mosaic virus last year in our beans, so we don't want to plant our beans in the same spot. We also had an issue with um, a disease, some sort of a blight in our onions, so we want to keep those away 
anything like that, like a garlic or the onions or the leeks, we want to completely avoid that area and put them in a new area of the garden. Now while I'm talking, I'm just going to put the kettle on. I hope you guys have a nice hot cup of something while we have our chat. But um, another thing that I wanted to mention, since I also spoke about pests, that's another thing you should be prepared for because everything sneaks up on you so quickly and before you know it, your plants are in the garden and you have pests right off the bat because they will jump in there. A lot of them are already in the soil and they're just waiting for your seedlings to be in there. So get prepared for pests too. Now what I mean by getting prepared for pests is ordering yourself some floating row covers for your coal crops like your cabbage, your broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, anything like that where you're going to be attacked by the cabbage moth who will come in and lay eggs on your coal crops and you'll have worms and they are horrendous. They will annihilate your crops like, like crazy. We had that issue last year and we did have the row covers already. We just didn't get them on quick enough. And once those moths get in there and lay eggs and if you put the row cover on, at that point, you're just giving them a haven. <laughs> they just have a, a buffet under your row cover to wipe out your crops. So if you are going to invest in some row covers, it's a good idea to order them now to make sure you have them. And I know it's only, it's February, but we could have trucking issues, uh, shortages, everybody could be trying to get them, but get them early if you want them and then you've got it and you're prepared. And make sure you get them on your garden before those moths show up and avoid what we did. <laughs> now, one of the things that we ordered this year is neem oil. I left it too long last year and could not get it. Neem oil is a naturally occurring pesticide and it is made from the seeds of the neem tree from India. It helps combat the leaf chewing and leaf sucking insects, so it's really effective against mites, aphids, thrips, um, caterpillars, because it will also smother the caterpillars. Um, it acts as a hormone disruptor, so it stops the, or it helps to stop the bugs transform into their next stage of life and also could hinder them from laying eggs, which is really helpful. In addition to our diseases, we also had a lot of pests. So that's why we have ordered the neem oil. I got it off of Amazon. I'm going to show you what it looks like and we have it for this year. So this is the jug that I got off of Amazon and I have never used it before. So all of the information I just told you is everything that I've done some research on, but I have heard a lot of people have used neem oil and they find it quite effective. Now it's not going to wipe everything out, but it'll just help control the insect pressure a little bit and it's natural. So that's what we wanted. I left it a little bit too late last year and it was out of stock. Um, I had ordered it and then it wasn't in until I wouldn't be able to get to my house until August. At that point, the insect had done their damage and it was too late. So that's why I got mine now. Also fertilizers. I've heard a lot of places say that they have a shortage of fertilizer. I don't know how true that is, but if you do use fertilizer, that's also something that you should order ahead of time or pick up from your local feed store if you can find it. If you have a, a really ish, big issue with weed pressure and you're planning on getting some of that weed fabric, order that early as well or pick it up at your local store. We don't use that. We scuffle in between our rows, but if that's something that you're thinking about, that's also another good idea to put on your, on your wish list. So I'm just heading down to the basement because I'm going to show you our seed starting setup and some of the things that I will be organizing here shortly to get ready for seed starting. You can see this is one of our seed starting stations here and this is one of three that we have set up. We have two tables like this. Each table has six grow lights and the other small one has two. So what I want to do is be prepared and make sure all of these lights work. So if you have a little station set up, you want to check the light bulbs and get them replaced before you need to start your seeds. So you don't want to come down here and have your seeds started and turn your lights on and, and have no, no um, grow light for your seed starts. So that's another thing is to check the bulbs. And another one is to make sure you have some medium to start your seeds in. 
The next thing you want to make sure you have on hand are containers that you are going to be growing your seedlings in. If you're going to be starting them indoors, you're going to need something with drainage. So you can keep, um, well, some people keep margarine containers or yogurt, the little plastic pots, anything that they can poke little holes in the bottom so that there's drainage for your roots. You don't want to get root rot for your seedlings. Um, keep those or you can get new ones from the hardware store or your feed store you can get them online anywhere actually I was at the dollar store the other day and they had quite a good little variety of little greenhouse setups like the the little plastic domes or little peat pots you can also make newspaper pots people do that but if you have your pots left over from last year like you can see over here you want to give them a good cleanup with hot soapy water just in case there was any leftover bacteria or pathogens um, from the soil from last year. You don't, you don't want to have anything that's going to hinder your new little seedling. So clean up your old pots or purchase new ones so that you're prepared. Another thing you can plan for is irrigation. Um, if you just use overhead sprinklers, uh, make sure you have enough for the size of your garden. You want to make sure everything gets a good water. But I had mentioned about the black mulch plastic that people lay down that mulch fabric. That is a really good uh, moisture retainer for your, um, for your soil and your plants. So that helps out. But we put in drip irrigation last year and I'll leave that link to that video above and also in the description box. So since we rotate our crops and we have put holes in the main header line, to accommodate our drip tape around each one of our rows, we now have to change the, um, the holes in that header line. So we're gonna have to punch new holes, but we're gonna have to plug the old ones. So we need to order these little plugs called goof plugs. So that is something that I still need to order and get those in before we start planting in May. Now I know it's February and you probably think I'm jumping the gun, but I just like to make sure I have everything on hand before because I've been left stuck. So um, that's another thing. If you have drip irrigation, check your equipment and see if you need anything ordered for that. And I thought of one more tip to give you about being prepared for this season. And it is to do with keeping your tomatoes up off the ground. Now, if you have a whole system set up for staking your tomatoes already, that's awesome. If you don't, consider buying some tomato cages or uh, some sort of trellis system to keep the tomatoes up off the ground. Um, some people buy cattle panel and that is like a fencing panel you can get from the feed store or your local co-op and people will put it into their garden, stake it up in their garden and just tie their tomatoes to the panel. Now we do something called a basket weave and we saw Travis from Haas Tools doing a demonstration on one of his videos and I will link his video below. It was um, really informative and we have used that, that system for about three years now and it's been really effective. So you need some tomato twine which comes in a box and you clip it to your belt and it just feeds out as you are weaving your twine through your tomatoes and around your steaks and it's been really handy. So consider getting some cages or stakes or trellis system, consider getting that early too. And that way you don't have your tomatoes flopping all over your ground and getting blight. So that's, that's it for today. Those are all the tips I can think of. I'll probably think of a lot more after I publish this, <laughs> this video, but that's it for today. And I'm really glad you came along with me and uh, good luck on your garden planning. And I hope to see you again next time.